ladies. Hi, welcome back. Thank you for being with me. Um, today I'm going to do um, a roundup of all the things that I've discovered. It's the end of the month and I just thought I'd do a quick roundup of the things that I've come across during the month that have helped me on my menopause journey. Um, different things, a little bit more than the black co-wash and, and the sage that we're, we're all quite familiar with. So um, it is the last Sunday of the month and it's indeed the last day of the month. I can't believe it's the end of July already. So I thought at the end of every month we'd sort of do a quick roundup of, of, of everything. But just before I do that, can I just quickly sort of diverse a little bit because just at the last minute I've been having quite a few questions sort of coming in about when does menopause end when do my symptoms um, stop will they stop after menopause now the, the end the ending of menopause is a little bit of a misnomer I think um, we all are enter menopause not really knowing too much about it and we think oh hot flushes a few mood swings a bit of weight gain last couple of years and that'll be over with unfortunately that's not the case I think we need to look at menopause in a completely different way the terminology that's used to describe menopause um, but by the way that we chat between ourselves and also the medical profession it can be quite confusing sometimes so to simplify it when you start going through menopause it, it, it's when your hormones start to fluctuate it can begin as early as 35 most women will begin to notice it around about 40 45 your hormones are now fluctuating they're going to be declining and you're going to be in that state of perimenopause until you've gone 12 complete months without having a period or um, two years if you're under 50. The average age to reach menopause is 51, 52. Now, from that day on, you're going to be post-menopause for the rest of your life. So menopause is like a journey that you're on, and once you start it in perimenopause, then that's it. It's a new chapter of your life. It doesn't end. It doesn't stop. Um, and I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news here, because it does get better. It's not, you know, if you're feeling pretty awful at the moment, then then your symptoms will calm down eventually. I can't tell you when because we all have our own individual menopause journey. We're all different. But um, as your hormones are fluctuating, then you're going to get all of these symptoms. When you've reached menopause, you go into perimenopause. Those symptoms are not going to stop overnight. They will calm down eventually. Um, but at this stage of life now, your because your hormones are at an all-time low, you still do produce very small amounts of oestrogen and progesterone, but nothing like the body's used to. So you need to take extra care of your bone health and your heart health. And this is you now. It's a new chapter of your life. You're never going to go back to the person that you were pre-menopause. That person's gone. You're now this new person. You're evolving into this new person. And perimenopause, menopause is going to be with you for the rest of your days. So I just wanted to clear that up to try and sort of sort of let you know that it is a new stage of your life embrace it there's going to be good days there's going to be bad days um but it is you um and you've got to go with it and try and find different things that is going to help you along the way so um i just wanted to throw that in it was a bit of a last minute thing because quite a few people on the facebook page this week have been asking this question so and it is a little bit confusing so just basically accept menopause for what it is it's you now and um let's get on with life but today um, what I'm going to do um, is talk to you about a few things that I found and it's not all about sage and co black co-wash like I said because those types of, of things crop up time and time again and, and although I'm sort of quite mindful of the fact that women are coming into menopause all the while that they're entering it and they don't know anything about it and, and these types of um, things remedies natural remedies are useful to know but if you look on any website any YouTube channel articles if you look at the top 10 list of, of uh, natural remedies it's always the same things and because menopause does touch such many parts of our life that it's nice to look outside of the box to look at the bigger picture and other things that can just sort of help us sort of make life a bit easier and, and make us feel a, little bit, a bit better uh, in, in sort of all walks of our life. So let's kick off then. Now, if you watch my channel, um, my, my light video live um, stream, you'll probably notice that normally in the background here, I've got a um, either a vase of flowers or a plant or something. But today I've got a salt lamp, a Himalayan salt lamp, because today it's all about salt lamp. Um, and basically, um, Salt lamps um, 
uh, when I bought it from the lady in the shop, she said to me, it's um, vitamins of the air, basically. That's how she sort of sold it to me. I've only just bought it. I've only had it about a week and a bit. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how effective it's going to be. But to be honest, just having a big chunk of Himalayan salt sitting next to me psychologically is quite, quite sort of healthy. I feel sort of psychologically quite healthy by, by sort of looking at it. Um, but, but what it does is um, it's, it purifies the air, apparently through something called hygroscopy. Um, now what this does is it actually draws water molecules from the air and it destroys all of the um, harmful positive ions. So it's actually drawing all of these water molecules from the air. And if these water molecules are carrying things like uh, pollution, viruses, dust, electronic smog from our um, TVs, from our mobile phones, um, viruses, bacteria, all those sort of things, basically it's they're drawn into the salt lamp. And if you can see inside the lamp, you can actually either have a um, a candle or a very small bulb and as the, as the lamp heats up it actually um, traps these uh, the, the viruses and the pollution and the smog and traps them into the salt lamp and then the water then evaporates back into the air so basically it's you've now sort of cleansed the air your environment supposedly so the air is all nice and clean and fresh and sparkly and bright so that's what it does that's what it's supposed to do um, and I must admit, you know, my daughters, they come in and they look at me with that quizzical raised eyebrows that sort of say, really, mum, you know, <laughs> you sit in the corner doing your hippie trippy stuff if you want. But I think I'm going to try it. I think it looks nice. It gives a nice ambiance to the room, even if it doesn't work. I mean, certainly it's not going to just sort of work on its own. It's going to be in a combination of things that you do to improve your general sort of healthy lifestyle that you need to be living. So I might even get another one now to put on my bedside table just to annoy them. <laughs> but I think it looks nice anyway, and I think it's certainly not going to do any harm. So let's have it, let's try it, and let's see. So that's the salt lamp. I'm sure you've probably seen them. Um, if you don't know what they do, or if you didn't know what they do, then you, now you know it cleanses the air through hydroscopy, basically, that, uh, and that's attracting water molecules and um, absorbing all of the, the pollution in them. Um, so that's how that works. Now the next thing um, that I was looking at, um, I'm just trying to see now, I've had to write some, <laughs> some notes here because I've got um, so many things to talk about, um, is, um, just bear with me one second, um, it's the drawing app, that's right, yeah, what I was doing, um, and I put this up on the Facebook page, now if you got into the um, the colour, the adult colouring craze that w was going around fairly recently, uh, the, you know, the adult colouring books and the pens, I'm sure you probably had a, one for Christmas or something, I don't know. But I've discovered this app, it's called Drawerings, G-R-A-W-E-R-I-N-G-S. And if you go onto the app store and just search for it, you'll see it. And I'm just going to show it to you now, because if you're into... Um, into the into coloring and and you quite like that therapeutic sort of relaxing feeling that it gives you then you're probably going to quite like this um i'm just trying to get it up for you now and it's not coming up i'll just leave it for a minute oh here we go so so what it does is it comes up like this i don't know if you can see it and you can actually it's like it's almost it's a combination between coloring and do you remember the um those spirographs we used to have when we were kids and we used to have that little piece of cork and we pinned those plastic things on it and with the circles and did the spirograph shapes it's a bit similar to that so basically it's like this and you can actually choose your color that you want of the brush there and then you click OK and then you can actually draw some really wonderful sort of shapes and you can play around with it until your heart's content you can color in you can use your finger or you can actually let's try and change the color a bit so we can have a different color and you can actually see um what it does a bit difficult to sort of show you and do it at the same time but basically you can actually sort of create all sorts of different shapes and drawings on there um and you can pin them to a gallery you can delete it if you don't want to you can um change all sorts of things on there there's lots of things that you can do with it. So I think if you if you quite like that type of thing, if you like drawing, if you like colouring, um, then you're going to 
um, probably quite like that. You can sit down, put your feet up for 10 minutes and just sort of um, have a bit of fun, just creating like these mandala type pictures which um, you can create and save or, or just uh, delete if, you, if you're not interested in them. So that's an app called Draw. Oh, there we go. It said it. I'd, I'd lost you again. Um, now, the next thing uh, is something a bit different again, um, in, and it is from Estee Lauder, and it's a foundation, but it's like it's almost a cross between a BB cream and a foundation. There we go. That's Estee Lauder. Now, the reason I've, I've um, picked this out to put a, put in today's talk is it's very sheer. It's very. Um, it's called Estee. It's called Double Wear. Um, and it's it really stays in place so if you're hot if you're having a hot flush if it's humid it really doesn't move too much but it's also very sheer and it's very light coverage but it it makes your skin look very very velvety very smooth um because i think sometimes if you've got to wear makeup for work or if you just don't like going out without makeup on i think it's quite easy to sort of look overly made up you can wear too much makeup especially during the summer but you just need something to, to sort of give your skin a bit of a glow this is absolutely great it really is it's got an spf of 10 which is not very high um but if i can just quickly add something here about spfs and creams spf face creams and um anti-aging creams or or moisturizing creams that you're using to delay the signs of aging they do two completely different jobs um, and one has one job to do one has the other now an anti-aging cream or, or, or a cream that you're using with all of these special actives in um, I use the phytomone pores hydrocreme one which has got hormones in to help with my hormonally aging skin or you might you might have one that's got peptides in whatever the special active is these these ingredients need to penetrate deep into the deeper layers of the skin so they can actually work now an SPF cream as a completely different job to do it's going to sit on the skin surface where it needs to protect the skin from the sun rays and protect the skin cells underneath from any damage from the sun so you can't you can't have a cream which is absorbed into the skin and protects you from the sun as well at the same time they've got different jobs to do they do different things so it's very unlikely that you would see a a well formulated anti-aging cream with a high spf purely because that's not what it does if you're going out in the sun just normal amounts sort of 10 15 minutes a day then you don't need a high protection cream in fact you know we've actually been putting the sun cream on a little bit too much and you've probably seen in the papers where we're not allowing enough sun's rays on our skin and we're getting a vitamin d shortage so it is important to get exposure to the sun without any protection just for sort of 10 15 minutes a day so if you're just sort of, you know, walking to work or you're going out in your lunch hour for 10 minutes or whatever, then you don't need a particularly high sun cream. If you know you're going to be out in the sun for a lot longer, use a separate SPF cream. So put your moisturizer on, put your treatment cream on, pause hydrocreme or whatever it is that you use. Put your sun cream on the top and then you will be protected. But don't expect um, them to do the same job. They've got different jobs to do. So I just wanted to point that out. But this is good for hot flushes. If you're having a hot flush, if your makeup streaks, if it runs, um, if it's humid, if it's hot, then this double wear really does stay in place. And I think it's about £30, that one. Um, next, um, this is something that I discovered quite by chance. And um, it's listening to books. Now, I was traveling a lot last year, I was going around Asia for business and, and a bit of pleasure, but I found myself in places where the, the internet was sort of hit and miss, it sort of, you know, very, very occasionally it came on or I didn't get it at all. Um, TV channels, the local TV channels were sort of pretty non-existent, couldn't even get BBC World or anything. Um, I was jet lagged, I was menopause lagged and my, my, my mind was sort of all of a sort of a mush all over the place I couldn't sleep and um, you know what it's like anyway with menopause sleeping is a nightmare um, so I decided to download a few books to listen to because even though I'd got my my books to read and my magazines um, my, my mind was constantly going off all over the place so I downloaded a couple of books and started to listen to them and within half an hour I was fast asleep 
which was absolutely amazing and then i tried it again the next night sent me to sleep again the next night so i th these um it's audible.com is where i go and it's the part of the amazon group so it's super easy to use super easy to download um and um what i found was that i wasn't actually getting past the first chapter because i was going to bed i was listening listening to the story and i'd fall asleep before i knew it and then I was having to find out where I was, so it was very difficult to, to progress on in the book. So I started using it um, when I was going to the gym um, and doing my sort of daily walk because, more than anything, just to get past the first chapter, but also when you're going to the gym, it can be so laborious sometimes, can't it? If you're on the cross trainer or the running machine, and you, you're watching the clock count down or, or the miles go up and every minute seems like an hour. It seems to take forever. So listening to a story um, takes your off, mind off to a different place. Time goes so much quicker when you're listening to a, a good book. Um, and also if you're walking, you know, walking can be quite lonely sometimes if you're doing it on your own. Um, so, but if you, if you know you've got a good good book to listen to then it, it encourages you to go as well the one thing that i would say is have a look at them um listen to the preview because there are so many books on there i mean there's fiction non-fiction you could learn a new language a new hobby um biographies lots of things you, you'll be sport for choice but there's been a couple that i i would have um bought but the person's voice was really quite annoying so i didn't i didn't buy it now there's lots of different voices on there but it can make a huge difference to the to your experience of listening to the story and some of them it just sort of like they grated on my nerves and i i knew that i wouldn't be able to listen to that particular voice for the whole of the book but i've i've listened to a few now and i can really recommend it and it does help um help with your sleeping so next thing is um buying a new perfume now uh getting a new perfume can really sort of brighten your mood lift your spirits and i think we've probably all um we've got a signature fragrance that we've probably been using for a long time um and it, it was safe with it you know we like it but now that we're sort of transitioning through menopause and we're, we're sort of becoming this new sort of person we're we're looking at things a little bit differently maybe that old fragrance it's, it's time to let go of it and choose something different to sort of see you through to the next stage of your life and there are many fragrances out there go and have a have a smell of all of them um what i would say is as we get older our skin becomes drier so we um when we spray a fragrance on it normally adheres to our, our our body oils that's what what makes it last on our skin as our skin becomes drier we are we, and we're losing estrogen because estrogen is responsible for um producing natural oils in the sebaceous glands um you might you may find it won't last on the skin quite as long so what you could do is think about if you're buying a new fragrance and look at the maybe the body wash or the body lotion or the um the dusting powder as well so you can actually layer the fragrance so that that will make it last a little bit longer um and especially if you're going for the sort of cologne lighter type fragrances because they can evaporate very quickly so layer it with, with a body lotion or a powder or something and you'll find it'll last a bit longer but you know fragrance it's a very personal sort of choice isn't it you know there, there are what suits you might not suit me and vice versa but you've got to find what you like but finding something new can just be quite uplifting i mean i'm i'm using at the moment something called coven which i've just finished and i don't have um and that's by um somebody called andrea mack she's actually an icelandic artist and she created this range of fragrances around her artwork which is quite unique and it sort of brings to life her sort of uh, her artwork it's very unusual um i've never met anybody yet in the same room that's wearing it and, and that's quite nice it's quite intriguing to have a fragrance where people don't know quite what it is the other one is a bit more mainstream um and that is sea by amani this is sort of a lighter fragrance whereas coven is probably more for winter time autumn months it's it's quite a warm fragrance whereas C um is it's a fresh fragrance it's more of a summertime fragrance it's not particularly sweet I, i'm not a sweet sort of um type of fragrance person anyway but that's just quite nice and light for the summer and then another one that i quite like is um modern muse by estee lauder so those are my sort of three fragrances that i'm going for at the moment 
have a look see what you think try them out and uh, it just treat yourself to a, to a new fragrance it could lift your mood lift your spirit so it's something nice just to do for yourself um the next thing i've um gotten into uh are box sets um now netflix is my best friend at the moment um, and i know that we've sort of said about listening to books on audible.com but sometimes it's just nice to watch something isn't it and I know that you know with our sleeping patterns you can go to sleep wake up in the night and you can't get back to sleep again and it's sort of you just need to get up and do something so you get into a box set and I've got quite addicted to them to be honest they, they um, many different ones that I've come across which I'll tell you about in a minute um, but you sort of really get attached to them and, and to their stories and to the characters then when it's finished it's like I go through this like sort of mini breathing morning session that they're not going to be in my life anymore so um, that's quite sad <laughs> but it's it, I you know I, I, my husband works away a lot so I'm on my own during the week and it's sort of I just, I'll just watch one more episode just one more episode and before you know it, you, you've watched the, spent the whole night watching a box set um, but I'll tell you what I've watched I'm not going to attempt to do a film review because I wouldn't have a clue how to do that but I'll tell you what I found interesting and if it's your cup of tea you can go and have a look at it the first thing is person of interest this is about a CIA agent and um, he was presumed dead who meets up with a billionaire software genius and they help to prevent crimes by, um, uh, with the help of this artificial intelligence machine which gives them lots of um, numbers which they have to work out um, how to prevent these crimes from happening. I'm not explaining that very well but it's, it's quite interesting so have a look at it uh, and, and see what you think. Next one is Lie to Me. Lie to Me is about a psychologist who reads hum micro human facial expressions so uh, he can sort of he sits you down and sort of ask you a series of questions and he can tell by the most minute movement on your face whether you're lying or not. Obviously the story that it's attached to makes it all very interesting but the, but it, it it's it's quite interesting just to see the the slight twitch on the face and uh, the slight movement of the head and he can pick up on whether this person is guilty or innocent or not white collar uh, is something that i really got into this this is about a con artist and an fbi agent who work together to help solve crimes uh, it's very sort of quick paced it's quick witted and there's lots of humor going through it so it's really good it's light hearted um and it, it's really engaging to, to watch the good wife um got really got into that i think it, that's quite popular it may have even been on the tv i'm not sure but i think i was a bit late coming to the party on this one but it's about a politician's wife who resumes her career as a defense attorney after her husband is jailed for corruption and we see her grow into a very strong woman and it's really quite inspiring that she sort of um, comes out of the shadow of, of being a, a wife and cut you know as, as the series goes on she gets stronger within herself and it, it's quite an inspiring series to watch bloodline was quite interesting not my favorite but i quite enjoyed it this was about um, a family called the rayburn family who own and live in this um, beautiful beachside hotel in the florida keys very idyllic life They've got um, three of their grown-up children who live close by, who work with them, or who work on the island with close by. So a, v a very close-knit family. They have lots of Sunday lunches. They play games on the beach, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then their fourth son comes back into the fold, who's a little bit of a black sheep of the family. And um, trouble starts to happen, and um, they start telling lies to each other, and it sort of, sort of disrupts the family a little bit, and they're their beautiful sort of way of life that they had so that that's that's worth watching um and what i'm watching at the moment is something called continuum which is a canadian um drama actually which is a bit different from all of the american ones and it's about eight convicted terrorists who escape execution in the year 2077 uh, and they travel back to 2012 and they accidentally bring with them their protection officer their protector i think she's called who's the equivalent of a police officer basically but they bring sort of the technology with them from the year 2077 uh, and they're using it in 2012 which is obviously a year that we can relate to so uh, that's, it's holding my interest i'm halfway through it at the moment so um that's um that's quite interesting so those are just a few of the netflix things that if you're into netflix if you sort of 
you know, you're awake during the night, like I know a lot of us are, and there's nothing on the TV, and, and you're into box sets, have a look at it, check them out. Um, likewise, if there's anything that you've seen, in fact, I've just remembered, I think Cold Feet is coming back, isn't it? I remember watching that um, a few years ago, and I really enjoyed that. So I hope that is as good as the previous one. So um, looking forward to watching that. If there's anything that you've watched that you think's good, do let us know, because we'd love to sort of... Um, hear hear some more it's always good to get uh, a personal recommendation rather than trolling around because you can spend more time looking for something than than you can actually watching something can't you so do let us know if you've if you've come across anything good um the next thing are these wipes from boots these are um their own brand and they're tea tree wipes three pound 40 for 25 and this has got to be one of the best finds that i've found uh, in quite a while they are um so refreshing and if you've had a hot flush that they're, they're quick to use that they're, they're really cooling and they absolutely smell lovely in fact when i smelt them they actually took me back to a holiday i went on a couple of years ago um and in the hotel the hotel amenities they had bulgari um like soaps and body lotions and bath teas really beautiful um um products in there and in fact i actually bought their fragrance because i loved it so much it was it was the haute verre which is with green tea the bulgari range obviously a bit more expensive than three pound forty but these smell exactly the same and isn't it you know your sense of smell just sort of can bring back that memory is so strong to that particular moment in time can't they but I just love these and well done boots. I think they are absolutely great. I'm going to be keeping them in my handbag. They've got witch hazel in, obviously. They've got green tea in, they're antibacterial. And when you've had a hot flush and you just feel clammy and you want to freshen up, one of these, and they're, and they're quite, um, quite thick. You know, sometimes you get wipes and they're sort of quite flimsy. These are really quite strong and they're well sort of coated. And you can just wipe down and it's like a bit of a air conditioning in a wipe almost and because the coolness lasts on the skin for so long and it's just got that lovely smell so well done boots thank you very much really enjoyed using them um next thing while i was in boots actually is what i picked up was this sleepies pillow mist now um that is 5.99 for 100 mil um now it's not a magical sleeping mist that's going to send you to sleep straight away, unfortunately, but it can sort of, if you're using it with other things in your sort of nighttime routine to calm down, like, you know, if you're having a, maybe a magnesium bath or if you're um, not um, going on your computer or your laptop uh, an hour or so before um, bed because that blue light stimulates the melanin that keeps us awake, um, all those sorts of things. It's not one particular thing that is going to sort of make you go to sleep unless you take a sleeping tablet. But all this can get you in the mood for sleep. Um, so it can help calm you. It's got a very, it's a very fine mist. Oh, just I thought that was a cap. Um, it's a very, you won't be able to see it, but it's a very fine mist. So you can just like spritz it over your bed before you get into bed. Spritz it on your pillow, um, on your sheets, maybe on your nightwear around, around the neck area. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, got a lavender smell lavender sort of spary type smell if you don't like lavender then you probably want to give it a miss i know a lot of people don't like lavender but it, it, it is it's got the very sort of relaxing sort of um ambiance to the room it will, it will give but i actually also keep a, a small bowl of uh, dried hops and mixed lavender in a bowl on my bedside as well because Dried hops actually have a sleep inducing effect, so um, try, try those as well. But it does smell nice and it, it, it sort of it will just sort of get you in the mood to relax and calm down and um, hopefully send you off to sleep. Um, now, next thing is um, hand mask. Now, we know I've got a couple here to show you, but you know our hands are a dead giveaway of our age and especially as we're going through menopause we tend to get sort of our skin dries out as we've said because we're not producing as much essential uh, as much um natural oils in in the skin anymore um and so our hands become dry we don't have very much collagen on the back of our hands either so they age they look 
they can age quite quickly. Um, we get age spots develop, which I'm sure that you, you're familiar with. Again, that's because of loss of estrogen. Estrogen is responsible for controlling melanin, which is the pigment that gives our skin color. Um, and when it's unregulated, we get these little age spots starting to come. So I always say, um, if you're going to the trouble of using a um, an anti-aging type face cream, I hate the word anti-aging by the way, but it, I mean you sort of embrace aging, but I mean these creams that we use to sort of delay the aging process to make our lines and wrinkles look less noticeable, um, if you're using that on your face and your neck, put it on your hands as well, you know, they deserve the same treatment and they can be a dead giveaway, you're spending all of this money putting, making your face look lovely, you show your hand and you're using like a two pound hand cream or something, then you know you're not going to get the same results and they do deserve they're on show all the while um, so make sure that you use something good so I would all every time I put my face cream on and I'm sure you probably do too that any excess you, you'll just wipe on the back of your hands anyway won't you but always put a little bit extra morning and night on your hands the same same cream that you're using on the face put on your hands as well um, and then what I will do is once a week is use one of these these hand masks um, they are impregnated with I'm just going to open one to show you um, with hand cream so what I'll do is um, take these out um, is I will do do a um, a scrub the same scrub that I use on my face I will uh, once a week I'll do on my hands as well um, and I use my cleansing oil the fine to bone cleansing oil and I grind up some uh, oats or sugar put them in with the oil massage them all over my hands so it's a really gentle nourishing exfoliating um, treatment do my face as well do my hands and then I will put these these gloves on um, and you can get these I got these from Amazon actually I think they vary in price depending on which ones you get and you can see them there um, and what you do is they're full of um, the cream that you use. Um, I've got one that's got like helping to reduce those um, age spots. So I'm just trying to get it on. Just put one on. So that's what it's like. And it's full of that um, nourishing, um, moisturizing, deeply hydrating um, cream in there. And it's also got this one has got the um, reducing the age spots i mean you can also use lemon for that if you rub lemon on the back of your hand to help sort of fade it a little bit and then you leave those on for like 20 minutes uh, and take them off and then um that's your hand well moisturized once a week you can do that before now i have used i know that you can use the um cotton gloves can't you or the silk gloves you put lots of hand cream on and put the gloves on and leave them on all night but to be honest i find that I find it almost a bit claustrophobic because I, um, if I, if I wake up and I'm having a hot flush and I've got these gloves on my hand and they're all sort of like tied up, I just want to take them off. So I don't particularly get on with those very well. But just I find just doing that once a week um, really does help give it a deep nourishing massage. And the other thing that you can do is the pinch test. I don't know whether you're familiar with that on your hand to check your biological age. Um, my hands are all <laughs> greasy now but if you put your hand out flat and pinch the skin on the back of your hand and if it if it goes back to its original contour then you're doing really well because that's the age of like somebody 30 I can't actually get a grip because I've got all of the oil on my hand um, that you, you need to put your hand straight don't do that that's cheating um, sorry I've got a little fly there um, because your skin is really <laughs> your skin is really taut when you do that so don't cheat put your hand out flat pinch the skin on the back of your hand and just for a couple of seconds and then if it goes back straight away then your, your skin is in good condition because that like I say is for like 30 something if you're between 30 and 50 you may find that it will just stay for a second before it returns back uh, and then if you're over 50, it might just be a little bit longer. But just check that. Do that pinch test to t check your age. And if it goes back straight away, my, I think mine's all right at the moment because I've just put some hand cream on. So, But if you just try I mean, it does normally, it will probably stay up for a second or so before it goes back down. So that's sort of between 30 and 50, and I'm sort of 55. So not doing too bad. But just sort of look after your hands. And I think that is just something that you can do as a little treatment at home. Um, Three, between three and five pound that's another one that I've got um, 
as well. Uh, got that from Amazon. I think that was about three pound fifty. And you just buy. You can get them for the feet as well, by the way. So you can use them, put them on your feet if you've got hard skin on the feet as well. They work just as well. Um, and the other thing that, that I always do, and I'm sure you can relate to me on this, is I'm constantly losing my glasses. I put them down somewhere and they will turn up um, in the fridge or, or somewhere really random about half an hour later. Um, and I've even tried leaving sort of glass, reading glasses in every room. So when I go into a room, they're there. But that doesn't work for me either because I just pick them up, put them on, and then they're lost again. Sometimes I perch them on my head or I put them down clip them in my top. In fact, my daughter came home the other day and she said, Mum, you know you've got two pairs of glasses on your head and one in your top, don't you? Completely forgot that they were there. Um, but I'm always losing them. So I have invested in some of these little stringle things. Now, you can get these. Um, again, I got them from a company called Eyewear Straps. And they're different prices for different ones. Th these are sort of roughly around about £7. Um, and you can get just the um, plain cord ones if you don't want to make a statement. Or you can get some really fancy, lovely ones. I chose these. I've got a pearl set because I think they look quite nice. And they also work on sunglasses as well. I got a sort of like crystal one as well. There. So I thought they were quite nice. And then I just got a, a gold chain one. There's three, there's three chains in a row there. And that's sort of almost like a piece of jewellery, isn't it? So you could actually put those on. So I'm going to give those a try just to see if I stop losing my glasses everywhere um, and see how it goes. But I think they, they sort of work quite well. I think they look all right. Looks like I've got a massive pair of earrings on, actually. <laughs> but anyway, there you go. So hopefully that will work. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, next, I have got... This is a lip tint. I've only got a couple more left now because I've got such a lot. I had to cut some out, actually, because I would have gone on being here all night. This is a lip tint by Clarins. Now, as we get older, our lips become drier. And I, But I, I love lipstick. I think it's always my go-to item in my makeup bag. I think it brightens your face. You know, it sort of gives you a lift. You put a little bit of lipstick on. Um, and as we age, we do lose the natural colour in our face as well. So we can look quite sallow. And a lipstick can always just sort of lift, lift the colour a little bit and make us feel a bit nicer. So I do love a lipstick. But sometimes, again, especially in the summer months, I find that... Um, you can look a bit too made up sometimes, you know, you just want to have a nice natural look. Um, wear, wearing a, a solid lipstick can look a bit too much some days. I mean, some days I just go for it and I love my reds and my corals. Um, but I found this is actually, um, it, it's a treatment lip oil. It's made of um, hazelnut oil, raspberry oil and jojoba oil. Comes in three colours, £19 by the way, that is. So it's super moisturising, it's not sticky, it's not tacky on the skin like some lip glosses are. Let me see if I can just put a little bit on for you. Um, because you can either wear it on its own or on top of a lipstick just to soften it a little bit. And it comes with a really lovely sort of sponge applicator. I don't know whether I'll be able to do it. Uh, I don't know whether you can actually see any difference in this light I'm not sure but you can use it like I say on its own just to give you a little bit of a, a shine it's not high gloss high shine it's just very natural and because it's got those really nourishing oils in it's going to oh get it around the right way Jane um, it's going to nourish your lips as well because what you want to do is you want to stay away from matte lipsticks matte lipsticks they're not kind to us. They, they can emphasize the slightest sort of little dryness on our lip and really make it look worse than it is. So stay away from matte lipsticks. Go for a cream-based lipstick um, or a nice oil sort of lip gloss. And these, they do stay on. And like I say, they do nourish the lips at the same time and keep them nice and soft and smooth. So I just quite like that, especially for the summer, um, just to pop on either on its own or above your uh, above a lipstick. Now these um, you're going to love. These are gel insoles. Um, again, I bought them on Amazon. They're reduced. They were $17.99 for a pair, but they're, they're at $5.99. Now these, they've actually got this gel inside, so it feels like you were actually walking 
on a cushion it's they are so comfortable i couldn't believe it when i put them in my shoe but the best thing is that you keep them in the fridge and then they you put them in your shoes on top of the insoles that you've got already and not only is it like super soft and comfy to walk on but they're so cooling and refreshing in and if you've got cool soles and the whole of your body seems to cool down as well really really lovely i don't know why i've not come across these before in fact i bought two pairs i keep one in the freezer put one in the freezer every night and then one in the fridge and in the morning um i will get the ones out of the freezer wrap them up in in a cloth or in a, in a zippy bag or something keep them in my bag and then the ones in the fridge i put in my shoes um and then change them over midday uh, so I've got an, a cool pair but they do last and, and they are just great if you if you're working all day if you're standing or if you're walking a lot try these so they are great I love them um, and like I say on sale at the moment for $5.99 last thing I've got is this it's um horse chestnut gel now it's f if you've got uh, legs which feel tired they're heavy or they're, they're aching it's a bit of, it's difficult to describe the feeling actually because i was i came across this by chance i was i was walking um down the road the other day and my legs were just so heavy they got this heavy feeling to them and quite achy um, I went in the chemist to get something completely different and I saw this on the shelf, picked it up and tried it and um, like it's horse chestnut gel as I said and, and it's supposed to, um, it's £10 by the way, um, horse chestnut gel for relief of tired aching legs. Um, so it helps to cool, soothe and relieve legs that feel tired heavy and uncomfortable and it was great i mean i put it i've only used it once um and the minute i put it on it just sort of gave a little bit of relief to my legs it was great so if you suffer from that that might be just something you want to keep in the cabinet and that's it that, that's everything on my list for um for my round end of month roundup i hope some of it has been useful i mean you might like to try some you might you know others you might not be interested in at all i'm going to carry on trying my salt lamp out to see how that goes um and uh i'm just finishing putting the finishing touches to the next newsletter at the moment that's going to be out sometime next week uh those of you that have already signed up for it you're going to get it automatically into your news box um if you haven't signed up, I'm going to put it on a link on the Facebook page when it's ready so you can sign up. And basically, it's just an extension of this Facebook page. We've got lots of information in there. We've got um, real life stories from you guys, from your, how you're coping with menopause and your journey through it. Uh, we've got health tips, beauty tips, fashion tips. We've got recipes. Um, we've got exercise, we've got questions and answers. So it's like a, a mini menopause magazine, basically, and lots of information in there as well. So please do um, sign up for that. But like I say, it will be out sometime next week and I'll let you all know when that's, that's ready. Um, I'm not sure what I'm talking about next week. I've got one or two things on the back burner, so um, I'll, I'll have a look. But I'll be back next week um, about this time with something. So in the meantime, I will say thank you very much for being with me. Um, please do let me know if there's anything that you've found that we can share with everybody on the page. Uh, or if there's anything that you you know you want an answer to um if i can help you with anything then i'll i'll try my best to help you so put your questions forward send me comments send me private messages send me emails um just contact me and we can discuss whatever it is and with that i will love you and leave you i will see you next week i hope you have a good week and menopause is kind to you and thank you so much for being with me i'll see you again next time bye bye